Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's currently the first week of November, and Mariah Carey is defrosting, so you know what that means. Yes, I've already gotten started. On this video, guys, we're going to be going over chlamydia, we're going to be going over gonorrhea, and we're going to be going over trick... I can never say... I say trick, but the correct pronunciation is trichomoniasis, and I still say it wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going over those particular uh, sexually transmitted infections. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm gonna ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're gonna love it. Go ahead and give a thumbs up now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and be sure to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. There you can sign up for a Next Generation NCLEX review session of part one and a part two. In part one, I teach you how to think. I teach you how to think critically. I teach you certain scenarios that NCLEX um, may put you in and where they expect your mind to go. I go over priority and delegation. I go over um, um, certain verbiage that is used and what NCLEX expects you uh, to get from that. In part two, we go over actual NCLEX type questions and of course the answers, the rationales, and that's the most important part and how to apply those rationales to your exam. So be sure to check that out. If you're a current nursing student, I've got something for you as well, audio lessons. If you have to do really, really well on your next exam, be sure to check out the audio lessons and see if I have one that matches your upcoming exam. And for those students that may want to pick my brain about something, maybe you want some tutoring, you can sign up for that again on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, right here on YouTube. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. Before we get started, I'd like to start off with a prayer. If um, you're not into that, just go ahead and fast forward. And if you are, make sure you're not driving or operating heavy machinery, of course. Close your eyes, by your head. Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for another day on this earth. Thank you for another opportunity that you've given me to go over nursing content in a way that the students seem to embrace, that they seem to understand. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this gift that you've placed in me, Father God. I pray that you get the glory and not me, Lord. Every single viewer, every single listener, for whatever reason they came to this channel, Lord, I ask that you please help them to succeed. Help them to understand this information. Help them to retain this information, Father God. Help them to be able to apply it as needed, Jesus Christ. Father God, please help them to be able to think critically and understand the concept. Lord, I ask that you please give them the discipline to study when they need to study and to block out all of the noise, all of the distractions that are um, constantly trying to pull them away from what they need to do and what they need to accomplish. Father God, I pray for the people who are supporting every single listener and viewer, Father God, those who are rooting them on and encouraging them, Father God. Lord, I ask that you please bless them as well. Lord, thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. A 23-year-old female patient is diagnosed with chlamydia. The nurse understands that which of the following statements about chlamydia is correct. One, chlamydia is a viral infection that typically resolves on its own without treatment. Two, chlamydia can lead to complications like pelvic inflammatory disease if left untreated. Three, chlamydia usually presents with severe symptoms, including fever and severe abdominal pain. Four, the treatment for chlamydia typically requires hospitalization and IV antibiotics. And guys, the correct answer is two. Chlamydia can lead to complications such as PID if left untreated. So chlamydia is a, a sexually transmitted infection. Something important you got to know about chlamydia is it's bacterial. Okay, so it's a bacterial infection. And absolutely, if left untreated, it can cause PID. Now look at the wrong answer choices. One, chlamydia is a viral infection. No, it's not. It's bacterial. You need to know that. Three, chlamydia usually presents with severe symptoms. No, Chlamydia, patients with chlamydia, they're usually asymptomatic, right? And if they do have symptoms, the symptoms are very mild. Uh, choice four, the treatment for chlamydia typically requires hospitalization, IV, flu, um, IV antibiotics. No, we do expect them to get antibiotics because, again, this is a bacterial infection, but the antibiotics they're going to get is going to be peeled. They're going to get it by mouth, not IV, and hospitalization is not required. The patient's going to be doing it outpatient. Um, not in the inpatient unit. Next question. 
The nurse is educating a group of young adults about STIs, including chlamydia. Which of the following points should the nurse emphasize? One, condoms are ineffective in preventing the transmission of chlamydia. Two, chlamydia can only be spread through sexual intercourse and symptom, excuse me, through sexual intercourse with symptoms present. Three, both partners should be treated simultaneously to prevent reinfection. Or four, once treated for chlamydia, you're immune to future infections. And guys, the correct, the only correct answer here is three. Both partners have to be treated at the same time. What's the point of you being treated and your partner not being treated? Right? Guess what? Infection does not confer immunity. So even if you got treated and your partner did not, you're going to have sexual relationships with that partner. And get what? guess what? You're going to get it again. Why? Because infection does not confer immunity. One, condoms are ineffective in preventing transmission. False. Two, chlamydia can only... The minute you saw that word only, what did I teach you about that word only? Absolutely not. False. And then four, once treated, <coughs> you're immune. That's false. Infection does not confer immunity. A 19-year-old patient is diagnosed with chlamydia. The nurse is preparing discharge instructions on the prescribed treatment. Which of the following is the preferred treatment for chlamydia according to current guidelines? One, azithromycin one gram orally in a single dose. Two, amoxicillin 500 milligrams orally three times a day for seven days. Three, doxycycline 100 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days. Or four, ciprofloxacin 500 milligrams orally once a day for seven days. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is three, doxycycline 100 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days. Now, a couple things I'm going to tell you about this antibiotic. You're going to teach the patient to stay away from unnecessary um, uh, sunlight ex exposure due to photosensitivity. You're going to tell that patient when they're taking this antibiotic to stay away from things that can decrease absorption, such as iron or, you know, dairy products. You're going to um, make sure that that patient's not pregnant. So before um, this drug is dispensed to this patient, what kind of test is going to be performed? HCG, right? Because this antibiotic is teratogenic. So the patient cannot take this type of medication if they are pregnant. Now, that's the first thing I want to tell you about this antibiotic. The second thing I want to tell you, when it comes to chlamydia, yes, they can get the doxycycline, but an alternative is the zithromycin, okay? Both of them are going to be for a week, for seven days duration. Professor D, do I need to know that? Absolutely. Next question. Oh, hold on, guys. Okay, next question. A 28-year-old female patient is diagnosed with gonorrhea. Which statement by the patient indicates a need for further teaching? One, I need to notify all of my recent sexual partners so they can be tested and treated. Two, if I don't complete my treatment, I could experience complications like PID. Three, since I'm now treated, I'm immune to gonorrhea and won't get it again. Or four, using condoms consistently can help reduce my risk of contracting STIs, including gonorrhea in the future. And the correct answer is three. Since I'm now treated, I'm immune to gonorrhea and won't get it again. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, both of those. Infection does not confer immunity. You can keep getting it over and over and over again. You could get it, get treated, and then if you're not using condoms, your partner's not being treated, guess what? You'll get reinfected. So the question is asking us which one requires further um, teaching, which basically means which one is the wrong answer choice. And so number three is the correct answer because we're looking for the wrong answer choice. Choices one, two, and four are correct, and that's why we didn't choose them. A nurse is educating a patient recently diagnosed with gonorrhea about the prescribed treatment. Which of the following treatment regimens is currently recommended for uncomplicated gonorrhea? One, ceftriaxone 500 milligrams IM in a single dose. Two, doxycycline 100 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days. Three, ciprofloxacin 500 milligrams orally once. Or four, I cannot pronounce that drug, but um, that's um, flagell, uh, two grams orally in a single dose. You guys know I can't pronounce. 
Okay, and guys, the correct answer is one ceftrioxone, 500 milligrams. I am in a single dose. Um, that is an antibiotic, and it makes sense because um, gonorrhea is a bacterial infection. Something else you need to know. When it comes to the ceftrioxone, that is the golden standard. That's the first line treatment you expect to be ordered for the patient with gonorrhea. They can get dual therapy and that dual therapy would be with azithromycin and it would be by mouth. Um, something interesting, when it comes to chlamydia and gonorrhea, you need to know the treatment, but you don't only need it to know, you don't only need to know that for LP and LVN, RN, if you're studying for your boards to be a nurse practitioner, guess what? You see this again. You have to know it. So it doesn't go away. This is information that you guys absolutely got, um, must know. Next question. After I get myself organized. A 23-year-old female patient is diagnosed with trichomoniasis. Which statement made by the patient indicates a correct understanding of the infection? One, trick is a bacterial infection that will go away on its own. Two, both my partner and I need to be treated to prevent reinfection. Three, I can continue to drink alcohol while taking this medication for trick. Or four, trick does not cause symptoms in men, so no, so my partner does not need to be tested. Okay, the only answer here that shows correct understanding is two. Both my partner and I need to be treated to prevent reinfection. All three STIs that I'm talking about in this video, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trick, all three, infection does not confer immunity. You see a common theme, guys? Okay. Let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, trick is a bacterial infection. No, it's not. It's a protozoan. Now, gonorrhea and chlamydia are bacterial infections, right? But trick protozoan. Choice three, I can continue drinking. When in the history of pharmacology have you ever seen that it's okay to take, uh, to consume alcohol while taking any drug, including an antibiotic? Never. So we know that's wrong. And then choice four, trick does not cause symptoms in men. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. And they cause severe symptoms. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you and I know when it comes to the genders, men are less likely to go seek medical attention, right? But when it comes to trick, oh, they're going to seek medical attention. Why? Because those symptoms are severe. Like, if you know, you know, right? If you studied this, you know, but I don't want to give it away because we're going to talk about that shortly. So anyway, the only correct answer here is both partners must be treated to prevent reinfection. The nurse is providing discharge instructions to a patient being treated for trick with that drug again that I cannot pronounce, but that's flagell. Which of the following instructions should the nurse include? One, you should avoid sexual activity until you and your partner have complete treatment and are symptom-free. Two, take your medication with a glass of milk to help with absorption. Three, you may experience dark colored urine while on this medication, which is a sign of toxicity. Or four, you do not need to notify your sexual partners about this infection as it is not contagious. And the correct answer is one. By now, I know you all chose this as an answer. You should avoid sexual activity until you and your partner have complete treatment and not only completed treatment, look at the rest of it, guys, and are symptom-free. Both of those. Let's look at the wrong answer choices. Two, take your medication with a glass of milk. Nope, that's going to decrease absorption. You're going to tell the patient to take that medication with what? Food to increase absorption. Choice three, you may experience dark colored urine while on this medication. Nothing wrong with that. That is true. But there's a comma. What comes after the comma? Which is a sign of toxicity. No, it's not. That's a, side, that's a harmless side effect. Be very careful because I tell you guys this all the time. You may see an answer choice that is correct. Then they put a comma and everything behind that comma is false. If the whole thing is not right, the whole thing is wrong, throw it out of there and go with the next best answer choice. Last, you do not need to notify your sexual partners about this infection. Yes, you do. As it is not contagious. Yes, it is. The We're talking about sexually what? 
transmitted infection. So of course it's transmitted. How's it transmitted? Sexually, duh. Hot mess. All right, next question. A patient's diagnosed with TRIP. The nurse understands that the preferred treatment for this infection includes which of the following? One, Metrona, does you see it, you see that drug, okay? Flagyl, two grams orally in a single dose. I always do that to myself. I try to pronounce it and I can't. Two, doxycycline, 100 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days. Three, Cipro, 500 milligrams orally once. Or four, azithromycin, one gram orally in a single dose. What do you expect to be ordered? This was an easy one because if you look two, at two, three, and four, those are antibiotics. And I told you this is a protozoal infection, right? So we would not expect to give an antibiotic. We would expect to give something like what? Flagyl. Okay, and uh, another med, if you don't see um, this drug that, that starts with the M that I can't pronounce, if you don't see that on the list, another um, um, alter, alternate, alternative drug, alternate, alternate drug, another alternate drug would be something like Tindamax that also can be given wide. It's an antifungal agent, okay? But the same concept still applies. Um, no, no sexual intercourse seven days after treatment and symptoms have um, resolved. Okay, so complete, com complete the course of the antifungal agent. That's number one for a whole week and be symptom free. Those two. The nurse is assessing a patient suspected of having trick. Which of the following symptoms are commonly associated with this infection? Select all that apply. How do we treat select all that apply as true or false? These are the symptoms that I was talking about earlier in the video. Let's go. One, yellow, green, frothy vaginal discharge. True or false? True. Two, vaginal itching and irritation. True or false? True. Three, painful urination known as dysuria. True or false? True. Four, lower abdominal pain. True. Five, painless genital sores. False. Painless genital sores, we'd see that in what? Something like syphilis. By the way, syphilis, that, um, the painless genital sores, you need to know that about syphilis, but something else you need to know about syphilis is the, the treatment. High, 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 high dose of what? Antibiotic. Okay. Uh, six, pain during intercourse. True. Um, couple other symptoms you have to know about a uh, trick for testing purposes. Um, painful ejaculation for men. And uh, for women, cervix may appear to have a strawberry appearance. You see strawberry appearance of um, cervix. That's what we're talking about, trick. A patient presents to the clinic with symptoms suggestive of trick. Which of the following diagnostic tests would the nurse expect the healthcare provider to order to confirm the diagnosis? One, urine culture. Two, NAAT. Three, RPR. Or four, pap smear. This is the last question, by the way. And guys, the correct answer is to the nucleic acid amplification test, NAAT. This is the preferred diagnostic test when it comes to trichomoniasis, okay? And that NAAT, they may do it on the endocervical area. They may do it on the vagina. They can even do it on the urine. But the NAAT, that is a diagnostic test, the preferred diagnostic test you would expect when it comes to trick. And guys, that's the end of this video. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know if you'd like to see more uh, questions, topics, lectures, or even cahoots in regards to chlamydia, gonorrhea, and or trick. Um, be sure to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And don't forget, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, right here, YouTube. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. Thank you so much for watching. You guys will catch me on the next video.